We're going to go through taking graphs that are curves and how you would make them into a line. Now, the gain of taking something that's curved and making it linear is that when you look at curves, the slope changes as you move across the graph. And so doing analysis of a curved function can be rather difficult because there's, there's, there's not a consistent method of analysis for slope. So what I want to do is kind of show you, when you get a sloped graph in the lab, how you can turn that into a linear function so you can get a better analysis of what you're going to use it for, whether it be algebra or whether it be just, just a physical interpretation. Uh, making that graph into a linear function can help you with that. So our first graph here we have blue. So here we have y on this axis and x on this axis, whatever those two variables happen to be. So if you see a curve where the curve kind of shifts away from one of the axes. So in this case, the, this shifts away from the x-axis. Then what you can do to make that into a linear function is you can instead plot that as y on the y-axis, but instead of x on the x-axis, you're going to put x squared. And by doing that, what will happen is you'll end up with a linear function. Okay. Now, if, if you're sitting there and you're a, you're a math expert, you're probably thinking, well, that's not always the case. And, and so what we're going to say is, for chemistry labs, that this will work more often than anything else, and, and so much that we can ignore other polynomials and we can ignore exponentials. Let's take a look at how that would work, though. So here is a set of data that would give us a curve that looks like the graph you just saw. So what I'm going to do is, instead of this data, I'm going to rewrite this data where I'm going to write x squared here, and then I'm going to recopy the y's over here. So the y's, I had 3, I had 12, I had 27, I had 48. Okay. But instead of x, I'm going to put x squared. So x squared is 1 for 1. For 2, I'm going to plug in 2 squared, so I'm going to plug in 4. For 3, I'm going to plug in 3 squared, which is 9. And for 4, I'm going to head, plug in 16. Now when I go back and plot this, what you're going to find is, is that you're going to end up with a linear function. So, oops, excuse me. So when I plot 1 and 3, I'll put a dot there, then what's going to happen is I have a slope of going up 3 for every 1 that I move over. So I'm plotting x squared versus y. And then when I plot 4, I'm going to go over 2, 3, 4. Now I'm going all the way up to 6, 9, 12. Here. Okay. And what's happened there is I've gone over 1 and up 3 each time. I've gone over 1 and up 3, over 1 and up 3, over 1 and up 3. So you can see that if I include my 0, 0 point, at this point we now have produced a linear result. If I go all the way over to 9, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to have to go all the way up to 27, but now I'm going to end up with a line resulting from that data. Okay. If I go and I look at the second graph, so let's switch colors here, so now I'm looking at this yellow one. Now, instead of curving away from the x-axis, I see that my data is curving away from the y-axis. So I'm going to square the y-axis now. I'm going to plot y squared versus x. And again, this won't work always. You could have a cubed here or something else, but that's not going to come up in, in, a, in an introductory science class. Okay? So, so now what I'm going to go through, here is some data that would give me this graph. So if I take the y values and square them, and plot them versus x, then I will end up with a linear function. So I'm going to plot y squared and x. So x, I'm going to copy down 1, 4, 9, 16, like I had up here, but for the y values, I'm going to just square them, okay? So I've got 2, 4, 6, and 8. And actually, what might be a little easier than this, is instead of squaring the y values, is I can square root the x values, okay? So, so now I'm going to go through and I'm going to put my 2, 4, 6, 8 here, I'm actually going to take the square roots of these. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2, plus or minus, but we're going to look at just the positive here. 
uh, square root of 9 is 3, and square root of 16 is 4. So now, oops. So now if I go ahead and look at a plot, where I plot y versus square root of x, now I'm looking at square root of x, when square root of x is 1, then my y is 2. When square root of x is 2, now my y is double that, it's 4. When my square root of x is 3, my y is 6. And when my square root of x is 4, then my y is 8. So now I've turned a nonlinear function into a linear function by squaring that one side. Now, to be clear, I, I was going to originally plot y squared versus x. Instead of that, okay, I took the square root of this and the square root of this. And when I did that, this became y, and this became the square root of x. So plotting this will give me a different linear function than that, but it will give me a linear function as well. Uh, and so this was a little easier for the numbers that I had worked out. Okay. Now, if we go back and we look at this a little bit, the first curve here, this, as long as this is going through the origin, is y equals something times x squared. So when I'm plotting y versus x squared, what I'm doing is I'm going to get a straight line through the origin where m is going to be the slope. So we can say for every change in x squared, my y will go up by that change times m. Okay, so now we get a consistent approach. It doesn't matter where I am along the x-axis. That will work from here to here, or it'll work from here to here, because now I've made a proportional graph, where, where this, when this you know, goes up by double, then the y goes up by double. And so I get this slope value that relates how much that changes, but it's consistent along the graph. Likewise, over here, this graph was y is equal to the square root of x times some number. And so now when I plot this, I'm getting a linear function where m is the slope of that line. And so now I can go through and say, okay, every time square root of x changes by so much, my y goes up by that much times m. And if I double that change, then my y will go up double the amount, still in that proportion of m, where m is the ratio of y to the square root of x. Probably better served on this graph. Okay. If we look at the data we, we collected here, in this one, our slope was 3. So, for every x squared that changes by 1, our y value would go up by 3. When we change x squared by 3, we went up by 9. When we change x squared by 5, we went up by 3 times 5, 15. When we change x squared by 7, we went up by 7 times 3, which is 21. Okay. Over here, um, our slope of this line was 2. So when we change square root of x by 1, we went up by 2. When we change square root of x by 2, we went up by 4. When we changed it by 3, it went up by 6. Okay? And you can see here that when I go from 0 to 2 to 4, I go from 4 to 8, I'm doubling my values. So I have a proportionality now that is no longer limited by where I am on the graph. If I try and do that analysis on one of the original graphs, and I say, okay, I increase my x and I go from 0, 0 to 1, whatever, when I go to 2, that change I get in y is not the same. So I have to really be explicit on where I am on the graph, and that limits our discussion. Now for the final graph here, if you get a graph that looks like this, okay, then what we're going to do to plot this, to get this to be a linear function, is we're going to do the reciprocal of any of those values. So we're going to take y and plot it with 1 over x. And that's going to result in a linear function. So over here, I have a set of data that would give me this kind of inverse relationship where, where as one thing goes up, the other goes down. So as, as my y decreases here, my x is increasing. As my x decreases, my y increases. 
So here's my original set of data. If I were to replot this, let me get rid of this curve here so I get some room. If I were to replot this as 1 over x versus y, then my y value is staying the same. I have 1,200, 600, 400, and 300. And my x, I have 1 over x. So 1 divided by 1 is still 1. 1 divided by 2 is 0.5. 1 divided by 3 is 0.333. Give that a couple things there, and 1 divided by 4 is 0.25. So now we can do a little more analysis. In particular here, if we look at the difference between these two points, I'm going up in x by 0.25 when I go from here to here. So, so I'm doubling x, and my y doubles 300 to 600, which is good. And then I can also look at 0.5 to 1. Now the difference between here and here, and the difference between here and here, in 1 over x terms, this goes from 0.25 to 0.5. 5, that's a difference of 0.25. This goes up by that amount twice. It goes 0.5 to 0 0.75, 0 0.75 to 1, it goes up by double the amount. If I look over here, my y went up by 300, my y over here went up by 600. So the idea of proportionality is shining through here, we see that this has gone up by, by one value, when I when I double this when I quad, when I double this one I added twice that value and so I ended up with twice the y value so I'm ending up with a linear result there's a slope on this so if I have a function y equals m times one over x then what's going to happen is is that over here the slope of this line is going to be m which means that every time 1 over x changes by a certain amount, y will go up by that amount times m. Okay. So for every change in this, I get the same change in y, but with the m proportionality constant applied to it. Okay. And so, so that can end up being a useful discussion, what is m here, um, when we go through some of the scientific principles later.